Greetings and welcome to a brand new episode of Weekly Update Wednesdays. My name is JD. This week's video looks at the question of identifying problematic frequencies and how to get better at them. But also, more importantly, I'll be announcing the winner of the Yamaha AG03 Mark II live streaming pack giveaway. So watch till the end of this video to find out. If you're new here, warm welcome to you. I want to say a big thank you and a shout out to all the patrons who help to support the channel financially. Do sign up for an email list and you want to become a patron, head on down to the website below. How do I get better at identifying problem frequencies? I get the general advice to train my ears, but how do I do that when I don't even know what to look for? Every video I've seen involved doing a frequency sweep. What is a bad frequency since everything sounds weird when I boost it? This is a great question and you hit it right on the head with that last point you made. Any sort of aggressive narrow boosting is going to make that frequency sound bad okay, with weird ringing and also resonances. So this frequency sweeping or you know fishing for frequencies as I like to call it, it's a useful tool to help to find and locate problem areas. But as with any tool, it must be employed for the right reasons and for the proper task at hand. Now, to quickly explain the method, right, it involves using a parametric EQ, boosting a narrow bandwidth, right, a narrow Q, and sweeping the range of frequencies to identify problem areas and then cutting that frequency. Now, grabbing an EQ and then straight away, right, searching for frequencies without knowing what to look for can potentially get you into trouble because if you are looking for problems, you are definitely going to find them. Start instead by listening critically to the part and thinking about what it needs, whether it lacks something or maybe has too much of another thing. Now, if it thinks sound too muddy or too dark, use a high or low pass or a shelving filter. There's no need to sweep for frequencies right, to accomplish that. It's the things that are in the mid range and you know, in the areas that's bordering the low bass, right? And you know, the, the high highs. They're a lot harder to get right for less experienced engineers. And this is where this frequency sweeping method, this technique helps. But as I mentioned earlier, relying on this method alone can have its drawbacks, okay? So how do you train your ears to listen for problematic frequencies? I'm gonna share with you an exercise which I developed myself, although I'm sure I'm not the first one to, uh, and not the only one to come up with it, which I call analytical listening. Um, I mean, you've heard of the term critical listening and it's somewhat in the same nature, right? But I like to treat it as a workout routine. And I'm constantly doing this as an exercise until it's gotten to a point where, you know, sometimes I don't even realize that I'm doing it. Take, for example, a snare drum. How would you describe the sound of a snare drum being hit? Now, a lay person, even an experienced musician, is gonna look at you and say, well, the sound of a snare drum, well, it sounds like a snare drum. But looking at it from an analytical listening point of view, doing this is gonna help you break down the various components that actually make up the sound of a snare drum. I would analyze and identify the following elements. Number one, the transient, which is the sound of the stick striking and hitting the drum head. Number two, the fundamental, which is the lowest all right, or the root note that's being generated. Right? This is always dependent on the size and the dimensions of the snare drum itself. Now, number three, the sound of the snare wire when it rattles. That's also part, a very, very important component and part of the snare drum. That's why it's called a snare drum in the first place. And then number four, the harmonic overtones. Right, this is right, uh, comes from the resonance of both the head and also the shell interacting with each other. You could go even further and say that the room reflections as well, right? But that's just right, technically an extension of the exercise that we are doing. Let's examine another familiar sound source that we work with, the human voice, okay? Number one, right? The fundamental note being sung. Number two, the transients that are being formed by the consonants. Number three, formants, right? That identify vowel sounds, your A, E, I, O, U's. This is determined by a couple of factors, the shape of your mouth, 
right? Your oral nasal cavity, the resonances, your vocal cords as well. And then there's the airiness or the breathiness, which different singers have, right? Depending on technique as well. Then there's sibilance, which is actually important, okay? Not all sibilance is bad. A little bit of it is important because without it, it can be hard to identify, right? Certain words and certain sounds. Uh, if you apply too much of a de you know what it can happen? It can make it sound as if the person is having a lisp. And there's also overtones as well, right? Try looking up polyphonic overtone singing. This is really interesting, right? The human voice is a complex sound. You can do this exercise anytime, any day. The important thing to remember is you have to remove yourself, right, from any sources of distraction and take in the surrounding sounds, right, of everyday life. Now think for example, when I drive, right, I try to identify all the different sounds. I don't listen to the radio, I don't turn on any music. Instead, what I do is do this little exercise. I try to identify all the different sounds that I hear. There's the sound of the engine running, which itself is a complex sound that's made up of, you know, different, different, uh, um, several, several different parts. There's the sound of the air conditioner, and there's the sound of the wind that's outside of the car, external sound noises, and the sound of the wheels in contact with the road. I try isolating and listening to these different sounds. Try humming the particular frequency or the particular right note on which those uh, sounds are, you know, are seem to be resonating at. Another example, if I'm going right for a walk, if I'm exercising in the park, I try to focus on all the various different environmental sounds that I hear, right? Be it from uh, nature, you know, sounds of birds chirping, sounds of insects, sounds of animals. Maybe there's water flowing, maybe there's wind that's blowing, right? Rustling the leaves and branches, right, of the trees. Listen to all these, try to isolate and separate all these sounds and, right, break them down in your head. Our human brains have evolved to be very, very effective in filtering out background noises, right? Because it helps us to focus on the important things, right? Such as sounds for communication, right? Human speech or sounds that indicate and tell us and help us to recognize danger. Exercising your ears in this way helps, right? To develop your listening skills to grow beyond what nature and what evolution thinks is enough for, right, our survival. And for me personally, this was one of the best ways that helped me as an audio engineer in developing my listening skills. Give this exercise a try and I'm sure it will help you get better at identifying problem frequencies. Not just in recording and mixing, if you are in live sound or if you are in audio post, maybe you are in production sound as well. I can't think of any field or any area in audio that won't benefit, right? from doing this exercise. So that's all for the Q&A segment. And now let's go to the moment that you've all been waiting for. The winner of the Yamaha AG03 Mark II live streaming pack giveaway is, drum roll please, Fidel's Fazil. Fidel's is a teacher at a local high school and also helps create content for the school and also music related activities that include, right, the students as well. You know, education for our kids is paramount and i think he's doing a wonderful job right as a teacher and also sharing right the joy of music with his students and his co-workers congratulations fedas i'll be in touch with you soon okay i also want to take this opportunity to thank yamaha music malaysia for sponsoring the prize right do check out the videos right for more info on their latest products developed for live streamers and also content creators as well hopefully you found this video right useful and informative if you did please do leave a like below do sign up for the email list and if you're not a subscriber please do click on the subscribe button don't forget to click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my videos do consider becoming a patron if you want to help to support the channel financially. See you again in a video real soon. Stay safe, stay happy and healthy. Happy recording and mixing. Peace, love, and music.